Um, I would say that uh, when I first met Emily in Bristol, I wasn't quite sure, uh, but I will say that she knows what she's talking about. She's a good girl. Thank you. Thank you to the organisers and thank you to all of you for coming here today. I want to talk about political power. I want to talk about what you do when you've won all of the arguments, but your politicians are still out of control. We've heard from AMA how the Badger Curl is not about badgers, it's not about TB. It's about so many other deeper underlying issues, and it's to do with power. So when you have politicians making irresponsible decisions, driving disastrous policies, how do you exercise your power? <coughs> we have tools at our disposal. We know that we can promote badger vaccination, we can promote cattle vaccination, we can protest and we can inform. But let's think about what we can do when we put our cross in the ballot box. On the 22nd of May this year is the European Parliament election. And it might seem that the European Parliament is a long way from the badger debate and the problem that we're facing today. But actually the European election is the most important election for animal welfare. All of our animal welfare laws, the vast majority, are decided at EU level. So all of the farming practices that we're interested in, all of the strategic decisions that Amma mentioned about land use, about which crops we grow, how we treat our animals, how we decide at a strategic level, those, those decisions on food and land use what we eat, what we consume, whether we live within ecological limits. So coming back to the badgers, naming and shaming politicians is great. Let's also <coughs> name the politicians that have helped us. Now we know in the list of the Devon County Council politicians who voted with their commercial interests or with their cronies, we know that there are also politicians that stood up for the badgers, both at local level and at national level. And our members of the European Parliament are working now on the new EU animal health law, which, which can, if the right decisions are made, lift the EU ban on cattle vaccination. Now that's a really critical step towards being able to ensure that cattle can be vaccinated in this country. But let's look at this industry that they're protecting. The direction of travel for the dairy industry is that cows won't be outside anymore. They're not going to be eating the filthy sludge and TB infected sludge that they're spreading on the landscape. The direction of travel is for cows to be indoors. The EU at present doesn't have legislation protecting dairy cows. And one of the one of the most important demands for the next European Parliament is to bring in that legislation and to change the way we treat dairy cows. But, but it's, not, it's not just in those factory farms that we face dangers. Trade agreements are being negotiated now that could take away the EU's right even to have its own separate animal welfare legislation. The EU-US trade agreement is being forged by commercial interests largely with the aim of opening up our farming markets and that means introducing th practices that are currently banned, introducing bovine growth hormone, introducing feedlots and indoor farming of cows. So on May the 22nd we've got a chance to cast a vote and make our views known. Yesterday, the Green Party published its Animals Manifesto. Our main manifesto is running under the campaign slogan, Europe for the Common Good. And within our literature, we recognize we're not just talking about the common good of human beings, 
We're talking about the common good of individual animals and ecosystems because we know that if we're going to tackle this government, the greed and the prejudice and the illegitimate exercise of power that is so aptly illustrated by this badger cull, we know we have to take back power for ourselves. So, so at the time of the European elections, May the 22nd, let's make sure that this crowd of people here is not, it's not just us. Take other people to the ballot box. Make sure other people vote. If we can create change at EU level, we have the potential to create change in land use, change in food and farming practices. Scientists at Exeter University last year published a paper that established that a very small change in our dietary habits could keep climate change to below the two degrees of warming that is judged to be catastrophic. We can make those changes. The German Greens made it their main condition of going into coalition government that the government would back a meat-free Monday. Now that didn't succeed. That didn't succeed, but we have to succeed going forward because the farming interests that are pushing this cull and that are pushing intensification and that are taking away the things that, as Amma mentioned, are most valuable to us, those people have the power and it's up to us to take it away because we have, we've won the arguments, we have public opinion on our side. So if we stand back and we let these people run our world, we're letting each other down and we're letting down the whole of the ecology of our planet. So I want to leave you with one thought. The Animal Aid Campaign rightly recognises that badgers have friends and friends have votes. Thank you, Emily.